Done! And that's actually balanced. Hello everyone, Zephy here, and this is Hibana. Rainbow Six Siege token weep magnet. Except that in this game, the weep characters are actually useful without being broken. <laughs> Hibana is a one-armor, three-speed attacking operator, a member of the Japanese SAT. She has been added during Operation Red Crow, along with Lazy Boy McGee and the most balanced unbalanced map, Don't At Me. She is free for all owners of the game who bought the Year 1 Season Pass, Rainbow Six Siege Complete Edition or the Year 1 Operator Pack. Otherwise, she costs 25,000 renown or 600 R6 credits, not including the 40% discount currently active in the in-game store. So go grab her while you can, because she is one of the best attacking operators to ever roam the earth. Yes, this is, despite her being one of the most well-balanced operators in the game. Why so? Well, let's start by taking a look at her gadget. Hibano's gadget, the x Cairo launcher, is a unique sort of grenade launcher which can fire a set of 6 fidget spinners from any range. The launcher comes packaged with a neat laser pointer, which can be activated by holding the right mouse button. It shows the player where exactly the pellets are going to stick. She can use the x Cairo to make short work of any destructible surface. This includes reinforced walls, soft walls, reinforced hatches, soft hatches, regular barricades, castle barricades, and destructible floors. This gadget does not ignore bandits or Kate's electricity devices, or mutes jammer, so be extra mindful of where you shoot your pellets, because once you fire them, you cannot get them back. So there is this extra layer of commitment. Hibana is one of the three attacking operators who can destroy reinforced surfaces, and the best operator in the game for destroying reinforced hatches. A small piece of Rainbow Six lore, she has actually worked on the x launcher together with Thermite, according to the official canon. And you know what any sort of interaction between any two characters in any sort of media then means. As my friend would say, a really big fucking hole coming right up. It's free. Hibana has three rounds of breaching pellets at her disposal. Upon pressing the detonate button, all fidget spinners start to heat up before exploding. This process takes approximately 5 seconds from beginning to end. If pellets are within range of mute jammer, they will not start heating up. And if Bandit hooks up his shock wire to the surface that the spinners are on, they will be immediately destroyed, just like any other gadget. Hibana's charges can also be destroyed by bullets or explosives, like impact grenades. Despite all those ways to destroy her pellets, take note that x Cairo launcher can fire them from any range. This means you don't have to get within kissing distance to the surface you are trying to breach in order to do so, making Hibana the safest hard breacher by far. This also means that you can destroy mirrors black mirrors from any distance. How awesome is that? Very awesome, is what I am saying. Pretty sure that's everything to say about Hibana's go. Oh, that's right, using the charges on soft surfaces. Yeah, I'm going to be blunt here, if you want to play Hibana optimally, I highly discourage you from ever using the x Cairo pellets on soft surfaces, ever. And instead taking care of only reinforcements, mirrors and castle barricades. Unless you're solo queuing, in which case, point one, I respect your bravery, point two, get some help. But seriously though, if one of the key hatches that you need to open isn't reinforced, there is nothing wrong with just using one of your x Cairo charges which you might not even need to do anyway if your teammates are willing to communicate and cooperate. And hell, sometimes you won't even need your team, I'll get to that later. However, if you will use Hibana's pellets like you would Ash Chargers or Zafia's Impact, you are severely underusing Hibana's potential utility. Since you can detonate several pellets at once from different locations, there is a huge potential for mind games there that most operators can only dream of. But hey, it's a free country. I'm not judging. Just keep this in mind during your Hibana gameplay. Hibana has access to two primary weapons, the Type 89 Assault Rifle and the Supernova Shotgun. Don't let the fancy name fool you though, the Supernova is hands down one of the worst shotguns in the entire game. Horrible damage, highly inconsistent even for a shotgun and absolutely horrible breaching potential, which is already redundant for an operator that has been designed for breaching. Sure, you can try to utilize your 3 speed for a cheeky rush, but you are a hard breacher. Your sole job is to not die. You are the most valuable person on your team. So don't do it. Or do. Whatever. If you do decide to use the shotgun though, you have access to all close range optics and the laser sight as your attachment of choice. Use whatever you want here. The Type 89 though is the weapon that you'll be using on Hibana in 99% of cases. You know. Because it's actually good. While it boasts a pretty small magazine with only 20 bullets in it, it's not the size of the mag that matters. It's about how you use it. The 20 rounds limitation is pretty bad, sure, but the gun more than makes up for it in the DPS and recoil department, being pretty easy to control with relatively high RPM and good damage per shot. 
It has access to all the barrel attachments with the exception of the extended barrel. Oh no, what a shame. It can also attach any grip, the laser sight and any of the optics, including the ACOG. Use whatever you would use on any other assault rifle. This one is not that much different. For her secondary weapons, Hibana has two options. One of them is the P229 pistol, a decent choice having access to the suppressor, the muzzle brake and the laser sight. And the other one is... That's right, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, the Machine Pistol Dream is here and it is alive as it has ever been. Brought to you all the way from across the Pacific, the Bering 9 SMG is still kicking ass, even after multiple nerfs by Ubisoft. Guess high RPM is still king in this game after all, huh? It has access to the suppressor, the flash hider, the compensator, all three close range optics and the vertical grip. For real though, the damage output when used optimally is insane on this thing and I am so glad that Ubi have nerfed this gun as hard as they did, because I no longer feel like I'm kicking puppies each time I use it. It is best fired in bursts because of the aforementioned recoil. Use whatever you want here, although I personally use the Bearing 9 with the flash hider, the vertical grip and the holographic. I'm not sure if the compensator even does anything on the Bearing 9. With the flash hider, the recoil at least becomes a little bit manageable. With that being said, let's talk about her secondary gadget options. Hibana is given two choices of secondary gadgets, the stun grenades and the breaching charges. The stun grenades are amazing when they work and are atrocious when they don't. Horribly inconsistent. They can definitely work on Hibana since she does have that 3 speed that helps with using the flashbangs optimally. But once again, your job as a hard breacher entails not dying. So picking a more aggressive secondary gadget might not be in your team's best interests. The second option Hibana has are the breaching charges. Very redundant on a hard breaching operator, especially so if you're running the shotgun. But it can also be very useful in destroying soft surfaces, like those unreinforced hatches I have mentioned earlier, or destroying the floor above the objective for that sweet vertical gameplay. Just be extra careful as Hibana, since you only have 20 rounds in your magazine, it might be harder to secure a kill because of those metal beams in the way. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Now, let's talk about Hibana's general strategy you should apply in-game and the mentality you should have. Number one point, because I feel like I haven't stressed this enough. Don't fucking die! Seriously, you have the most important job out of any attacker operator in your entire team. And if you fail to do the one job that you had, you are letting down all of your teammates. So please, be careful when playing Hibana. Drone out the enemy roamers, watch out for spawn picks, communicate with your team. Do anything it takes to not die. This includes not contesting the enemy alone if you can afford to do so, ask your teammates for help. And this isn't even about your gun skill versus their gun skill, it's about it being easier to survive a 2v1 rather than a 1v1. Once again, communicate. And about those spawn peaks, you have an A cock. You should use it to help against those, but it's still going to be safer to not contest them and just move in a different direction. This different direction preferably being the key reinforced hatches the enemy has. If you can detonate them from a safe distance, you should do just that, because if you get picked off by the enemy roamers on your way to those hatches, well that's gonna suck. A lot. So be extra vigilant. If you manage to destroy the key hatches or if the enemy doesn't have those, great! Now you can move to help your ally Thermite or Maverick to take care of the walls that they're trying to destroy if they haven't done so already. Or if you're the only hard breacher on your team, well, then you do their job. That works too. Neat strategy by the way, set your breach palace on one side of the wall while Thermite gets the other one. This way it's going to be very difficult for Bandit to trick both of you. Speaking of bandit tricking, take note that with the addition of Kaid, defenders now have a more reliable way of countering Hibana on hatches than having a vertical mute jammer. So call up your friendly Thatcher and Twitch, they should be able to help you out in this department. Remember to stick close to your teammates until you have done your heart breaching duty. You can frag out once you have done everything you should do. Running type 89 plus bearing will help you out in this regard, since this way you will have what are essentially two medium to long range primary weapons. Just try to not panic if you run out of ammo. Happens to the best of us. Did I mention not dying yet? Yeah, staying alive is pretty important. Especially since you are as fragile as a React YouTuber's ego. Hibana works very well with anti-electronics operators that can help her do her job more reliably, like Twitch and Thatcher. 
Having someone really beefy or really good at fragging out can help you get to hatches more safely. Finke with her boost, Montagna with his shield and Jackal with his anti-roamer kit will all help out greatly in this regard. Remember to take note of map specific crucial hatches on certain maps and objectives. Like on Bank, these three hatches grant great sidelines and attack routes when taking control of archives so they are a high priority. Or on Chalet, for example, this hatch is the single most important assault point for attackers if the defenders have went kitchen, so taking care of it is pretty important as well. Basically, if a hatch protects an entry point straight into sight, or if it provides a great sightline to use against the enemy, you should take care of it. In conclusion, Hibana is obviously a must-have when the objective calls for it. But even without it, she is a safe and great pick nonetheless. There is a reason why Hibana is consistently one of the most picked attackers in both ranked and pro league. It's not because she's broken like Lion is or overpowered like old Ela was, it's because she is so versatile and a great generalist operator, just playing good across the board. Her kit is very fun and diverse, and I enjoy every second I play as her in both ranked and casual. A character that is both competitive and exciting to play is very hard to design, and I applaud the dev team for this great achievement of theirs, two years after her release. I cannot wait for Ubisoft to release the untimely Hibana Ultimate, because we all know that it's going to bring in a ton of cash. I know I'll probably buy it. Maybe. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe, as I'll have more operator guides coming your way soon. And remember folks, communication is key. Good luck and have a nice day.